drinking of green tea was known in China from the 4th century. Tea plants didn't grow in Japan until the first seeds were brought from China during the Tang Dynasty, when relations and Kitro exchanged between the two countries reached a peak. In the 8th century, the first mention of a formal ceremony involving the drinking of tea is found. However, at this time it probably didn't look much like the tea ceremony we know these days. Also, during the 18th century, a Chinese Buddhist priest wrote a book on the proper method of preparing tea. The book was called Cha Ching and taught the correct temperature of hot water and the use of tea vessels. It is said that today's styles of tea ceremony evolved largely through the influence of this book. During the Nara period, tea plants were grown in Japan and mainly consumed by priests and noblemen as medicine. Towards the end of the Tang Dynasty in China, the drinking of tea was going through a transformation from medicine to beverage. But due to deteriorating in relations between the two countries, this transformation did not reach Japan till much later. The Japanese were forced to mold or cultivate their own traditions and culture around the tea. Tea was a rare and valuable commodity from the Nara period to the Heian period, so rules and formalities were based on this concept. Had tea been native to Japan or more readily available, it is almost certain that the tea ceremony would not have been created. Tea was made popular in Japan during the early Kamakura, largely thanks to the efforts of the monk Eisai. In 1187, Miyo-1 Eisai, a Japanese priest, traveled to China to study philosophy and religion. When he came back, he became the founder of Zen Buddhism and built the first temple of the Rinzai sect. It is said that he was the first one to cultivate tea for religious purpose, unlike others before him who grew the tea for medicinal use only. He was also the first to suggest and teach the grinding of tea leaves before adding hot water. Fifty or so years later, the Zen monk Dayo returned from visiting to China and brought with him knowledge of a tea ceremony as it was practiced in Chinese Zen monasteries. Successive monks refined the art until the priest Shuko presented a demonstration to the shogun Ashikaga Yoshimasa. Yoshimasa, already a man of the arts, took the tea ceremony almost immediately and at this point the Chano Yu began developing a secular following. Shogun Ashikaga Yoshimasa formalized the rules of a tea ceremony in the 15th century. His invited guests walked down the garden path to his tea house and waited in an alcove or portico to be invited in by the tea masters, a person very experienced in the tea ceremony. Before entering the sanctuary, guests removed their swords and entered without representations of social standing. Inside the tea house, the titles of shogun and samurai didn't exist. Everyone became equal, an emperor and a peasant farmer would be held in equal esteem. Samurai warriors pledged to serve as shogun, a warlord of noble birth owing land and great wealthy. The samurai lived and fought by strict rules of respect. Stories from the medieval period show the warrior acting by the rules of his life to be brave honest, loyal, and faithful. Samurai practiced cultural arts and performed everyday activities with a level of awareness to bring them enlightenment. Shogun often presented tea in a special jar to a samurai for a great achievement. The warrior prized his award to tea because he could afford to invite his family and friends to share in the tea ceremony celebrating his valor. Initially, and unsurprisingly, the tea ceremony was an activity indulged by the nobility, as tea itself was primarily the elixir of upper class at this time. This began to change with the advent of Sen no Rikyu. Sen no Rikyu is considered the most profound influence on the Japanese tea ceremony. A man of simple taste, he had a cultivated and disciplined lifestyle and defined the term wabicha by emphasizing simplicity, rustiness, and other humble qualities in the tea ceremony. It was Rikyu who synthesized a unique way of life combining the everyday aspects of living with the highest spiritual and philosophical tenets. 
This has been passed down to the present as the way of tea. As Riki was making a name for himself, the warlord Oda Nobunaga was also gaining fame through his dead expansion and at length came to meet Rikyu. From the age of 58, he served his daimyo, an enthusiastic amateur tea man. Nobunaga made every effort to surround himself with men versed in the Chano Yu, which by 1575 included Seng no Rikyu, Imai Sokyu, and Suda Sogyu. The great warrior also went to great lengths to secure valuable tea items, which he doled out from time to time as rewards to his generals. Nobunaga was killed in 1582, and in this time Rikyu became a closer companion of Toyotomi Hideyoshi, the second of the three unifiers. Like Nobunaga, Hideyoshi was an aspiring tea aficionado and valued Rikyu's skill highly. When Hideyoshi hosted a tea at the Imperial Palace in 1585, Rikyu received the Buddhist title of Koji from the Emperor Ogimachi, thus establishing his preeminence among the practitioners of tea in Japan. Hideyoshi proclaimed that rich or poor, high or lowborn, might bring one pot for hot water and one bowl for tea and attend the gathering. Over a thousand people from all walks of life assembled at the shrine. Hideyoshi erected a solid gold tea house while Rikyu used his preferred facet hut. Thus, both extremes of tea, the flamboyant utensils, tea and the restrained wabi tea were represented at Kitano. At this time, Hideyoshi and Rikyu were very close. In the end, and for reasons unknown, Rikyu was executed on Hideyoshi's orders though not before leaving a lasting mark on the art of tea, which by the Edo period has spread through the classes. They entered the tea house by bending over to walk through a door too short to allow them to walk so straight. In a sense, they bound before entering the tea room. The host waited until all guests knelt in a sitting position and the room fell silent except for the sound of boiling water. The tea master whipped powdery tea into a boiling water with a bamboo whiskey and served cups to each guest. Conversation was not an accepted praxis. Guests sought in peace and drank their tea. The benefits increased the use of tea even more in every house the tea ceremony became important. Families either set aside a special room in the house for drinking tea or built separate tea house, sukia, in the garden. The buildings were of simple bamboo construction and each one was designed specifically for each tea master. The garden path became the first step to the tea ceremony. Invites walked along a path designed to increase contemplation. For at least 400 years prior to his period, gardens were made with natural materials, tree, plants, water, stones, enhanced with lanterns, breeds and waterfalls. Zen monks designed gardens with just sand, gravel, and stones. Sand symbolized water and rocks symbolized mountains or clouds. Each person interpreted the garden through their own imaginings, experience, and dreams. A few things all tea rooms have in common is that the floor is covered with tatami mats. Usually, there is an alcove or tokonoma in the room, but its size may vary. There are different sizes of rooms which have names according to the number of tatami mats in the room or the layout of the tatami mats. For example, a four and a half tatami mat room is called koma, small room. There is no fixed layout as to where the door has to be in relation to the host mat, but the guest should be seated next or near to the tokonoma, so the host mat cannot be in the same corner.